Hello and welcome to the talk on Open Drivers for ARM GPUs. I'm Alyssa Rosenzweig, the lead developer of Panfrost at Collabora, the open source uh, driver for ARM's Molly GPUs. It is a bit of a Lenore Connect tradition to ask every year the so-called Molly question. And every year, or so I hear, uh, a Molly developer would present at Lenaro Connect or an ARM engineer, and some member of the audience would ask, hey, when are there going to be open source Molly drivers available? And yeah, the answer is a year ago, maybe two years ago, if you like uh, something a bit less stable. Uh, but certainly by now, the answer is it are, it's already here. So I'm uh, quite happy to be presenting at this Lenaro Connect with uh, some better news on that front. But it's not just Molly. Uh, essentially, every ARM GPU of note, and I don't just mean ARM's GPUs, I mean uh, any GPU you, you will find with an ARM CPU, has some amount of open source support, uh, at least for the ones worth caring about right now. Molly is very well supported with the Lima and Panfrost drivers for the oldest Utgard series and the newer Midgard and Bifrost series. The Adreno GPU is well supported uh, by the Freedreno driver. Vivante has Etna Vive. Video Core has VC4 and V3D. Uh, even Tegra ha has the Nouveau driver supporting uh, most modern models. It's, from our perspective, at least, this is a huge success. Uh, it's unusual to come across a board running Linux in 2021 that has an ARM CPU and yet uh, has is paired with an integrated GPU that does not have uh, open source graphics drivers. It's, unfortunately, it's not to say it's impossible. The two outliers right now is would be Imagination and much more recently Apple. It'll, but although, at least on the latter front, there is the Asahi project, uh, which I've uh, played, a, played a bit with outside of my main role. Uh, but uh, what can I say? On one hand, you have these before times with a downstream and downstream code and proprietary code, which creates a bundle of pro problems for users and system integrators alike. On one hand, the features are going to be capped uh, generally with the, to the embedded subset of OpenGL and without hardware documentation without driver source code, uh, nobody can do anything about this with these proprietary stacks. On one hand, the hardware becomes this guarded secret, which means even application developers with no interest in driver development will end up lacking the information they need to effectively optimize their applications. And although, although some documentation gets published on the broad strokes, Generally speaking, vendors are reticent to disclose fine microarchitectural details that do matter in practice. When this information is available as part of the open source implementation, everyone on the platform benefits. On a much more uh, co concrete level, the there is a very st uh, stern issue with end uh, end of life cycle, the planned obsolescence issues, uh, and frankly, the electronic waste crisis that we're uh, seeing much like cast on in recent years. The fact is that forcing devices to be deprecated after five or so years is not sustainable in the long run, and consumers are starting to understand this and starting to care about this. And it's very unfortunate that historically proprietary drivers including proprietary graphics drivers uh, were contributing to contributing to this crisis when when a proprietary user space driver requires a downstream kernel and the downstream kernel is out of is, is not maintained anymore uh, you get caught in a very vicious cycle uh, it's clear that the list of problems with these proprietary times uh, were very lengthy, but it seems like such a distant memory because we don't work, we don't do that anymore. That's not we're an upstream world now because nowadays the goal 
is to have upstream first uh, code, at least on the Linux side. The user space is expected to be free and open source. Architectures are expected to have permissively licensed uh, machine-readable documentation, generally in the form of XML files in Mesa. And uh, the benefits uh, affect everyone, the end users, vendors, and integrators alike, because devices can be maintained for the long term, even after a vendor has moved on to the, the uh, newer GPU IP, the community can continue to maintain devices, preventing electronic waste. Uh, there is considerable opportunities for cross-vendor collaboration, enabling drivers to be developed in a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost, or enabling uh, features that the proprietary stack simply could not do without the collaboration, most notably supporting the full desktop specification of OpenGL, which is necessary for a good experience of desktop uh, desktop Linux, including on an ARM laptop, yet is very much absent from uh, almost all proprietary drivers for ARM GPUs. So if we want a proper uh, ARM development laptop, this open source drivers are very much uh, in that blocking path. And it's, uh, I'm very happy to say that that blocker has been resolved. Because the fact remains, open graphics is not an underdog disrupting the status quo, at least not anymore. We are the status quo, whether you're a part of us or not. For the first case study, let's look at the video core uh, GPU from Broadcom, notably used in the Raspberry Pi. In these before times, the video core was supported with a proprietary OpenGLES driver, but to make matters more interesting, to say the least, the proprietary driver running on the ARM side, or even when th this driver became open source, it was not the real driver, or at least not the interesting part. It was a shim that tra essentially translated OpenGL calls into a serialized form that got passed off to this coprocessor, which was not the GPU in its fullest form. And the coprocessor was running a multi-megabyte firmware that did all of the actual uh, driver tasks up to and including the shader compiler, which leads to every issue previously discussed and then some. Needless to say, for a target for a, for a board that's targeted at the Linux hobbyist community, uh, this was led to, uh, met with some backlash and led to a community-based reverse engineering effort, which made some impressive results and was a bit of public pressure mixed. And the net result is that the ties got turned. Broadcom hired the uh, prolific Mesa developer Eric Anholt to spearhead a new open source st driver stack for the video cord uh, IP. And the end of this first half of the story was that this video core 4 driver did get merged into Mesa, and the corresponding piece did get merged into the mainline Linux kernel, supporting OpenGLES 2.0 on the older Raspberry Pis. And this is all fine and good. But this is all still part of my before time, so to speak, because what we have today is so much better than a single person maintaining a driver for ES2. Because today we have OpenGL ES3.1, Desktop Geo, Vulkan 1.0, shipping in production by default on the latest Raspberry Pi. This has been a the culmination of a tremendous amount of work in collaboration between Agalia, Broadcom, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And the net results are speak for themselves. We have in Mesa very clean driver source code. The OpenGL driver has become a reference implementation for any new OpenGL driver in Mesa. It's based on uh, auto-generated XML file, or auto-generated C from XML files with a uh, permissively licensed architecture description. There's no secrets here. 
And in fact, the, both of these drivers are conformant per the Kronos conformance definition, which is uh, means in every sense that matters, they are the they are the real drivers. They are. This is serious. This is a success story, and to see how far it's come should give much inspiration and much hope for every other driver project that's uh, so inclined. However, this end result of this video course story is not the only way such a reverse engineered driver can end up. For the next case study, we can look at Friedrino, which has had a very different situation. It started out under very similar circumstances. There was a proprietary OpenGLS driver and later a Vulkan driver released by Qualcomm for the Adreno hardware, and no, there was no real hardware documentation to speak of. There was no, uh, certainly no open source code to speak of, and this led to a very active reverse engineering effort by uh, Rob Clark, who at the time was a hobbyist and in time was able to get some support from his employer, Red Hat, to reverse engineer and work on this Mesa driver uh, on work time, but it was still very much an outsider. And yes, it did develop some OpenGLES support, enough to run common Linux tasks, say a GNOME, GNOME shell with acceleration, your average X11 or Wayland, but uh, that's still not, that's not everything you need. But the end of the story is um, much more interesting, I think, because today the OpenGLES driver supports 3.2, missing only a single extension. Uh, the desktop OpenGL support is up to 3.3, and there's a Vulkan driver, Turnip, which supports uh, 1.0 and is very close to supporting 1.1. And this has been a project that's been led by Google, uh, including Rob Clark, who is now a Googler uh, after leaving Red Hat, Eric Anholt, another Googler after leaving Broadcom in very capable hands, and indeed Christian Hicksberg, who is known for founding the Wayland Project. In other words, some of the top pe graphics people in Linux are working on bringing this Freedrino driver into fruition. In addition to Google, there has been significant contributions from Valve and Egalia, and the net result is that Freedrino is uh, capable enough to ship in production hardware. And indeed, this is one of the biggest successes and biggest changes in the driver space since last Lenaro Connect. In the past few months, we've, we're seeing uh, Google ship Snapdragon hardware to end users, and this is running the open source reverse engineered, mind you, driver stack from day one. Uh, it's hard for me to understate the importance of this. The fact is that Google believes so strongly in the need for open source drivers for this hardware that they were willing to invest in a reverse engineering effort over Qualcomm's own proprietary stack. And there's been a stereotype, a myth I dare say, about open source drivers, including graphics drivers, that it's only for us loony free software types. And I mean, yeah, you got me. I, I say free software, just like I say open source. But the fact is that open source graphics drivers are wanted by such loonies and fringe types as, I don't know, Google, Valve, Broadcom. The biggest players in the graphics industry get it. Do you? So I want to look at the final case study, the one closest to my heart, and that's Pantfrost. The origin story looks almost identical to the Friedrino origin story, and I will openly admit that I duplicated the slide, because, yeah, uh, the vendor provided a uh, proprietary OpenGLS driver and a Vulkan driver, and got reverse engineered by Connor Abbott, another prolific Mesa contributor, and myself, and uh, I wrote a OpenGLS 2.0 driver, which, again, it's it's a big good, a big first step. It opened up a lot of doors for uh, Molly-based hardware on Linux. It meant that you could run an accelerated desktop finally. 
uh, without proprietary drivers. It meant you could run a mainline kernel, but that's not the end of it. That's something you can do in high school. And I know this because I did it in high school. And when Connor reverse engineered the relevant part of Molly, he too was in high school. I think there might be a trend about Molly being reverse engineered by high schoolers. Uh, maybe I'm going to need to go to the local to the local school system to see if anybody's interested in taking out Val Hall. I don't know. Uh, that's It just seems to be a trend. But then again, it's Molly. So what do I know? The after, at any rate, is something so much further than I could have dreamed of in between my English exams. Uh, we support OpenGL ES 3.0 and quite close to 3.1. We support desktop OpenGL 3.1. And this is a this is seeing commercial backing, uh, with the project being led by Calabra, uh, between uh, my fellow Calabra and Boris Brazion, as well as my, myself. I uh, became a Calabra employee, you know, after graduating high school. And the largest change I've seen in Panfrost, especially in this past year, has been moving away from this reverse-engineered underdog model, because as of uh, the end of 2020, uh, ARM is now on our side, quite frankly. Uh, provide, there's no need to reverse engineer this hardware anymore. And I quote, ARM are now working together with Collabora to provide us with documentation. So the net result is that the, the ubiquitous Molly hardware, including Midgard, T16 up, and every Bifrost chip is very well supported. Uh, the Panfrost driver is seeing real, uh, real use cases, for instance, shipping in the, let's just say, uh, shipping in the Pipe Pro, <laughs> which is a uh, very common development laptop for uh, ARM hackers, uh, seeing much interest in the Linux hobbyist space. Uh, I would not be surprised if one of you in the audience is a happy owner of one and running Panfrost, whether you realize it or not. But there is something missing from the story, because we saw with the video core that part of its success story and becoming a serious driver and the uh, really the, the only driver of interest for the hardware was gaining a conformant Vulkan implementation. We saw for Fredrino in the uh, months and years leading up to shipping and production, there was intense interest in its turnip Vulkan driver. So what about Panfrost? You know what? I think we can be a serious driver too. <laughs> so starting last month, uh, my fellow collaborator Boris has been hard at work uh, putting together a Vulcan driver, and we, I'd like to show off the first render. Here's Vulcan Cube running with a open source driver stack on a ARM Molly Bifrost GPU. Thank you.